I'm going to take you through a demonstration and some information for Senadius 2 node engine. So first of all, what is it? Well, I'll start off by saying what it isn't. This is not a general purpose two node NAS system. The two node engine itself is a standalone software service, which is a leadership election mechanism for a two node system, giving you leadership status or follower status. And that information resides in a NAS KV bucket with some other keys, which you can use in your custom software. The way it works is there is a software service which has a finite state machine and also a number of probes and these probes check for internal conditions and external conditions. The state of those probes is handed over to the decision engine and the decision engine, the finite state machine, will derive leadership status. And the way this happens is it does so in independent time space. So two different machines as per the diagram on the left, you have NATS installed, you have the state machine logic and probes this is the TNE. This is what's inside the TNE software service. It's a single binary image driven by configuration. As the stimulus changes, it changes for both systems and both systems in independent time space will decide what status it should be, whether that's leader, follower, uh, on this other states like one chord impaired and also a leader RX, which is a constrained leadership mode. It works very, very simply, uh, but it's immensely powerful. And what's it good for? Well, in the world that we live in, as we begin to decompose software and disaggregate software, simple software services, you might not want to think about how to deploy in a highly available scenario, especially with IP addresses for reachability um, without requiring a load balancer, for instance. So I could write two software services, which might perform some simple functionality. I could even put this in front of a web server if I'd like. Um, and the idea being that I could make, say, two web servers with the same configuration highly available in the face of a catastrophic failure or even maintenance-based failure in a constrained or remote system. Also, there's something called an external integration loop. So if you wanted to take the two-node engine and you can either embed it, it's written in Go, you could embed it into your own application, or if you're not writing in Go, you can take one of the NAS client libraries and access and watch the NAS KV, which is a transitioning key. And this transitioning key holds the state of the finite state machine. So whether it's leader, whether it's follower, but it also is used to uh, be a, a signal, like a trigger to say the system is transitioning and your logic might need to go off and do something, whether that's infrastructure as code changes to interrogate another system or start and stop some other, other services. And once your code has completed, you then update this NAS KV value, this transitioning key value, and the TNE will basically carry on where it left off and finish the transition. So you can actually break this uh, kind of close the loop and open the loop up into your own software through a very, very simple integration. So we're not quite done yet. No rethink con would be complete without a demo. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do something stupid. I'm going to pull a wire out of a piece of hardware, which is right next to me. So I'm just going to reach across. This machine here is a configured leader, and this machine here is a configured follower. And on the screen in front of you, you can see a terminal with three sections. The bottom one are ICMP echo requests hitting the floating IP address, which is currently residing here. And the top screen uh, has something, it's actually a, a web page readout, which is forward slash FSM Z, excuse me, which is giving you um, the information that you can see in front of you, which is a probe state information. It is whether the floating IP address is present, in which case it is for the configured leader. We've got the configured leader state, which is it's come up as a configured leader, where the uh, the middle one, the, the, the server on the right is a configured follower. We have a basic posture check. So it's a leader and it can be a follower if the role is reversed. Transitioning is false because the system's stable and we've got an uptime. Now, the, the middle one is the, the machine on the right. And what we're basically going to do is I'm going to pull the wire out of this one and then the floating IP address will move as will the leadership state. Are we ready for this? I'm just going to pull this wire out and you'll see the network activity will cease. The ICMP echo requests have failed. Now what will happen is the, the states will change. And I'm going to stop the top one because there's no point of having that. It's already happened, but you saw the probe state has failed. So probe state liveliness, false. Floating IP address is true because it absolutely has it. FSM posture, it's a leader RX. This basically means it was a follower before, but it's now a leader. Is it ready as a follower? True. Well, it can be true 
when the probe naval liveliness uh, is restored. Transitioning is false because we've already transitioned and we've got a transition timestamp. Now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to restart the other uh, watch. So I just need to explain this again. These two terminal terminals here, the reading information from a web page, which is directly from the FSM. So the FSM, this isn't uh, the FSM service. This is just a, I'm doing a curl basically from a web endpoint, much like HealthZ and ReadyZ from K3S and Kubernetes. This is FSMZ to give you the same information. And anybody looking at this, you might recognize the style. So what I'm going to do is I restarted the curl uh, watch. I'm now going to plug the note back in. And what we're going to see here is the information comes back up uh, and we're in the state impaired. And the reason that is, is because we've latched into that state. So if you think about highly available systems in remote systems, in mission critical stacks, we might not want the disruption of a preemptive restoration. So as the leadership flag moves across between the two nodes and the floating IP address goes with it, we're in a position where we can restore leadership to the configured leader very, very simply. But without the preemption flag, it, it will latch across. And this is what's happened here. So I'm going to go across here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unlock the node. And I'm going to go across back. Now what we're going to see is we're going to see some changes. The ICMP echo request fail because our leader RX node, the configured follower in the middle, has gone back to follower status because its probes were all true. They were all mended and resolved or the probe states, and the top screen from the configured leader is now restored back to leadership state because all of its probe uh, state allows it to happen. So we've now seen a failover and a restoration. Uh, and we can see that the state information, and actually this state information is derived from NAS itself. It's from directly from a NAS KV. If you'd like to know anything more about the Synadia 2 node engine, you can reach out to the Synadia team. However, at this point, it would be cruel not to show you a two node K3S integration, having talked about the external integration capabilities. So here's Byron Ruth with that demo. As David's mentioned, um, the two node engine supports running as a standalone component that uh, other external services can plug into. Uh, it is written in Go, so uh, that also means that you can actually use it and embed it within an, an, an existing Go program. So in this very kind of quick demonstration, I'm going to showcase how the Tunit engine is actually embedded within the Kine layer that um, is the data store component of K3S. So this is sort of the component that it provides alternate storage backends um, to uh, etcd within K3S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the Tunode um, uh, components. I'm just running them in Docker for right now for simplicity, uh, but this can be kind of uh, built as a single single binary that that uh, you can deploy as a single K3S instance on edge devices, for instance. So what we're seeing as things come up, the bottom two panes are doing NAT stream report, and you can see that the single the first node is basically elected as the initial leader and uh, all writes are basically going into that kv bucket um, you can see this as kv uh, underscore kine and then the right hand panel is showcasing the follower in this in this particular case and you can see that the messages are being replicated across on the upper right hand side this is just using a standard kubectl to get nodes and you can see that there are in fact two nodes and these are pinging both um, each API server uh, independently. So I don't have you know, a load balancer or virtual IP really set up here. So you're gonna see the one node go, go offline um, in, in a second and um, the other one will come up, but the leader election kicks in and as long as you have a virtual IP in front of these two nodes, then the transition will happen seamlessly. But I wanted to basically demonstrate how the two node engine can be applied within uh, K3S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply start up K9S, which is a fantastic tool if you're not aware of it. And here are our nodes. I'm going to run a workload, which is um, Nginx in this case. If I can type properly, here we go. Uh, apply. 
we are. So we'd applied a workload. So this is an Nginx workload that um, deploys two pots. It's a deployment with two replicas that actually has an anti-affinity. And there's different ways that you can, again, depending on your use case, um, you can choose to always have two replicas of the same uh, service across your two nodes, or you might want to have one service and uh, you have different strategies for failing over. Obviously with the two node system, you have different constraints than you do with a three node with uh, uh, kind of raft high availability in place. So if we check out our deployment, we, we can see that Nginx is in fact running. Um, we can look into the pods. And if we look into the pods, we see that that node, that pod is on K3S2. And this pod is on, describe it, K3S1. So those properly got placed. And then, like I said, we don't know which one is the primary at the moment. So let's see if we do a port forward. So this is using the second node in this particular case. And just to kind of confirm that this is actually working, uh, in fact, you can see the Nginx service out output. So from here, that's all well and good. Um, just to kind of showcase what we can do that the cluster still stays up, or at least the single node that, that remains stays up, we can say, just to kind of like showcase a failure here, we'll do uh, K3S2 and kind two. So we're stopping the whole pod. You can see this kubectl screen is offline. You can see this NAT server isn't reporting anything, but you can still see that K9S is up and the kubectl get nodes watch uh, screen is still, still working. So that is a, a very, very short um, showcase of how the TuneIn engine is actually able to be embedded within uh, K3S and uh, it, it's prop properly working and we're going to be looking forward to later this year to actually release a distribution of this. Thanks so much.